why transformer works with only AC and not DC? Or what happens if I give DC supply to the transformer? These types of question asked in interview many times. And if you want to create positive impact, then you must know the answer. So in this video, we are going to explore the answer of both these questions with animation. So now let's get started. So now to understand why transformer works with only AC and not DC, let's understand this first. Basically, transformer works with the mutual inductance principle. And what is that? When the changing magnetic field of one coil links with another coil and in that coil it induces EMF. This is known as the mutual inductance. In order to produce EMF mutually, there are two requirements. There has to be a coil and there has to be a changing magnetic field. Now how this magnetic field changes? Either through current you produce a changing magnetic field or you provide a relative motion between these two to get the changing magnetic field. Now in case of transformer, we cannot provide relative motion in between these two coils. Generally, this is the case of the generators when there are relative motion between the armature and the rotor. But in case of transformer, we cannot give relative motion. So what we are doing in transformer, we have only one choice and that choice is by changing the current, we should change the magnetic field. And by this changing magnetic field, we can induce DMF in another coil. If you want to learn these things in detail, then you must check out this video. There I have explained working of transformer with animation in the easiest possible manner. Okay, so I think it's clear to you that in order to get induced EMF in secondary coil, we must have a changing magnetic field. So now when we give AC supply, the nature of AC supply is continuously alternating. The magnitude of current is continuously changing. So by default, the magnitude of flux produced by that current will be also continuously changing. So directly we are getting the changing magnetic field and that is why when we give AC supply in transformer, it induces EMF in the secondary coil. Now let's see what if we give DC supply to transformer. When we give DC supply to the primary of transformer, the magnitude of DC current is constant. When the magnitude of DC current is constant, it produces a constant magnetic field. When it produces a constant magnetic field, that magnetic field will not induce EMF. Why it will not induce EMF? Because what is the equation? You have studied the equation of induced EMF, right? What is the equation? Equation is E is equal to N d phi by dt, where d phi by dt is change in flux with respect to time. When you give constant current, it will give constant flux. And the d phi by dt of constant flux is zero. And that is why we will not get any induced EMF on the secondary side. So I think now this is clear to you that why transformer works with only AC and not with DC. Hey, I am going to prepare a complete animated course on DC machine. If you are interested in that course, then keep checking the pinned comment of this video or all the other videos of our channel. Please keep checking the pinned comments of all the other videos of this channel. In spite of knowing all these things, now still if you want to give DC supply to the transformer, what will happen to that transformer? So now we'll explore that thing. Now when we give DC supply to the transformer, what will happen? Let's observe here and understand. So we have started the DC supply and you can see there is some deflection on voltmeter on the secondary side. And now that meter goes to zero. Now it is not showing any voltage onto the secondary side. And on the primary side, still you can see a current is flowing through the primary winding. After some time, the winding is heating up and the primary winding will burn after some time. So this will happen when we give DC supply to transformer. So we have seen what happened here. But now let's understand why that happened. The logic, the reason behind that. So basically there are two things happening here. Initially we have seen that there is some deflection in voltmeter and later we have seen that the primary winding got burned or damaged. So first let's see why we got that pulse. Let's say for example we are giving some supply and because of that a 10 ampere of current flows through the primary winding. So when we give that 10 ampere to the primary winding, current does not start with the 10 ampere. It starts with zero and gradually it will reach up to 10 ampere. So this gradual change in current will happen. Why this is happening? 
because of the inductance of primary coil. What is the inductance? Inductance is the property of material which does not allow into the change in current, right? Or it opposes the change in current. So here, initially there is no current and suddenly we have started giving 10 ampere of current. So there is a change in current of 10 ampere. So the inductance of that coil will not allow that current to change to 10 ampere. So because of this, we'll get a gradually changing current. And because of this gradually changing current, what will get a gradually changing magnetic field. When the magnetic field is changing, what will happen? It will induce DMF into the secondary side. So this is the reason why we got some voltage initially and then we are not getting any voltage in secondary side. Because when current got settled on 10 ampere, then the magnetic field is constant. There is no changing magnetic field. And when there is no changing magnetic field, we will not get any induced EMF on secondary side. So I think this thing is clear to you. If you are enjoying this thing, then do not forget to hit the like and to subscribe to this channel. And now we are heading towards the second question. In the second part, we are going to explore why this winding is getting burnout. Here we are giving the same DC supply as of AC, but still when we give DC the winding gods burn. Why? To understand that thing, let's observe the equivalent circuit. Basically, what is equivalent circuit? It is the simplified circuit of the entire transformer where we represent the resistance of winding, inductance of winding, core loss, copper loss, everything is represented in a small resistance and inductor form. Right, so this is basically the equivalent circuit. So here you can see the equivalent circuit of transformer. In this equivalent circuit, this RC component or this RC resistance is basically representing the core loss of transformer. You know, this core loss is constructed of two things, ED current loss and hysteresis loss. Let me tell you that I have prepared two separate videos on eddy current loss and hysteresis loss. And these two questions are very important from the interview or exam or viva point of view. So if you want to check out these two videos, the link will be in description or you can see here in card. So now when we are discussing about the core loss, let me tell you that this core loss is depending on the frequency. And what is the frequency of DC? If you know, then write that thing in comments below. What is the frequency? The frequency is 0 hertz. When the frequency is 0 hertz, the core loss will become 0. So let's remove that component. Now there are two inductors. Basically inductor have inductive reactance. Inductive reactance that is XL. What is the equation of XL? XL is basically 2 pi FL. In this equation, you can see there is component of frequency. And again the frequency of DC is 0. So the inductive reactance provided by these two inductance will be 0. So we can remove these two things also. Now the only resistance R is left and that is the internal resistance of primary winding. Now when we give AC supply all this component R1, X1, RC, XC clubs together forms impedance and opposes the flow of current. But in case of DC X1, Xc, Rc all will be removed and only R1 is left. So because of this, the resistance of the primary winding will reduce to the significant amount. And because of this less resistance, current will increase to the significant amount. Now let me tell you that the size of the conductor of primary winding will be depending on to the current. And the current is depending on the entire impedance Z. But now instead of this entire impedance Z, we have only resistance R1. So what will happen? The current will increase to the large extent, but the primary winding is not meant for that much large current. And because of the out of the rating current flowing through that primary winding, it will get burned after some time. So this is the reason why the primary winding will get burned. So if you are interested in learning more similar stuff, keep checking this channel. So until we meet again in our next video, till the time, bye bye.